each and every afternoon as you make your way around the great state of South Carolina and beyond listening to us on incredible radio stations like Fox Sports Radio 1400 in the Midlands and around the world on the iHeart Radio application. Out of the gates on a Wednesday afternoon, our buddy Roddy Jones set to join the program here momentarily. Roddy, my man, we missed you last week, buddy, but I'm glad to get you back on the program this week. How are you? I'm fantastic, Lawton, and you and I were just going back and forth. I didn't I missed your text last week. I was traveling, uh, so I apologize, my man, but uh, but it's good to be back on with you. No, look, dude, I, I respect it. You you got to keep climbing that ladder, too, dude. I, I, I'm like, well, I'm waiting for the day that, you know, it's primetime kickoff on ABC, and my man Roddy Jones is on the call, and they're going, why does Roddy still do that show with that Lawton Swan guy? And I'm like, that's my guy. That's my guy. <laughs> Exactly. Well, look, man, uh, Herbie's going to be doing it forever, but but as long as I just stay employed, uh, that'll be good enough for me. Man, well, you do a tremendous job, and I tell you, you know, this past weekend, I, I called it a wild weekend. Uh, you were probably at the one of the wildest games uh, of all with that Florida State and, and Jacksonville State game. Just real quick, uh, your thoughts on that moment. Oh, man. Uh, You know, when you see it happen live, um, you just try and figure out, like, how did we get here? And I think in the moment, it was pretty easy to 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 figure out that the penalties and the missed opportunities got you there. But then the question is, like, why? Why did you have those things? And and you go back and you watch. And and I don't know if it was, um, you know, signaling by the coaches or, or what, but I just think the maturity of the team really showed that it's not quite there. You had some dropped touchdown passes by older, experienced guys, Keyshawn Helton being the main culprit. You had some dropped touchdown passes by younger, uh, more talented guys, Malik McLean being the big culprit there. You had multiple, multiple pass interference penalties uh, that really cost you. And then at the end of the game, you had coaching errors. And, and, And I don't care what the Florida State coaching staff says like that was the wrong call at the end of the game they keep calling it a two uh, a two-man under look and, and that's not it that's not at all what it was that's, that's cover one uh so so basically man free one safety in the middle of the field everybody else is man to man uh and that second safety that lines up at the same level as the as the free safety ends up being a robber so it ends up being cover one robber that's a good defense if you're third and 15 and, and you're not expecting, you know, a, a Hail Mary at the end of the game, it's a bad defense um, with six seconds left in the game under any circumstance. So, um, you know, I, I think I think there was a little bit of everything that let Florida State down. Uh, and then, like, the worst thing about it, Lawton, is they were in the same defense to play before, and the same cornerback got beat by the same receiver. Jacksonville State just missed it. They went to the other side. So when Jacksonville State lined up to run the play again, they were basically yelling at Derek Cooper from the sideline, throw it to, to DeMond, throw it to, the, throw it to Z is what they were saying. And he was the Z receiver. They did. They scored a touchdown on a walk-up at the end of the game. So it's, it's, it's incredible. It's unbelievable is what it is. Roddy Jones again joining us here on the program. And, of course, this week the Clemson Tigers will take on Roddy's alma mater, the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets in death. Oh. We'll, get, we'll get to that one here momentarily but you know Roddy from a guy that that covers this league and talks about the ACC all the time on Sirius XM I mean what you know what are your early thoughts of you know what we've seen from this conference just from the standpoint of you know losses that the Dukes had in the opener to Charlotte uh, losses that Georgia Tech had to Northern Illinois I, you know I think you know Dabo Swinney and other coaches will tell you Northern Illinois is a good team, but Georgia Tech fans will tell you there's no reason we should lose to that ball club e- either way. But you know what have you made of the beginning of the the schedule for these ACC teams? Um, well, well, Northern Illinois was a team that was zero and six in the MAC last year. So uh, every coach, you know, you never hear a coach tell you that that a team is bad, but like deep down inside, Northern Illinois has seen better times, and and uh, um, so. I am one of those people, and I'm hard on Georgia Tech, believe me. Yeah. Uh, but I'm one of those people that you should never lose to that Northern Illinois team. Uh, in terms of the start of the year for the league, um, it's disappointing because you spend the whole offseason talking to yourself about how the league's going to be better in a lot of ways. And, and and if all of those things come together, or if most of them come together, then you're set up for a pretty good season in the league. And, and what we have 
seen through two weeks is that it doesn't look like very many of them have come together. It looks like these teams are kind of what they were last year. You know, we talk about all of these returning starters and all these guys coming back and it gets us excited, but, but we forget that like when you're an older player, the changes are very incremental, you know, it's small changes in the way that you play and you get just a little bit better. It's not the monumental jumps we see between like freshman and sophomore year or even sophomore and junior season between your fifth and your sixth years, you know? So, so I, I think that when you look at a team like North Carolina, still have uh, issues on the offensive line, still have issues creating pressure on the passer. They're more talented on the back end, but, but you know, those guys have proven hard to replace which we knew they would be. And without getting better in those other areas, you have a team that is not as good as they were last year. You look at Miami and it looks like they're basically the same team. They're going to play good teams to close games and maybe they'll win more than they lose, but they still have issues all over the field. And De'Ara King does not look as good as he was a year ago. NC State really controlled that ball game, Mississippi State for the first, at least two quarters. Um, but the inability to put the ball in the end zone when you're in the red zone, they had a missed field goal. They settled for another field goal. They threw an interception on a running back pop pass. So, like, it, it, all of these teams have proven that they're kind of what they were a year ago. Um, and, and that is not good enough to overcome multiple mistakes. But yeah, we'll see what happens with these teams getting better over the course of the season. You'd expect them to. I think the one bright spot is Pitt. You know, going down to Tennessee, Tennessee's not great, but that's a tough environment. And it's a decent football team with some excellent talent. So going down there and getting a win, um, it was certainly a good one. Yeah, and I think at this point, Roddy, the other thing, too, that college football, whether it's the college football playoff or just the nature of the way the game is set up now, I mean – like I've never been like a rah rah ACC guy, and I've never really bought into the mindset of a rah rah SEC guy. But I mean, for Clemson, given what's happened around them so far, if you're gonna say, "Hey, the Tigers are still still have a chance to get in the college football playoff if they win out," I mean, you gotta have these teams in your league perform because at some point there's gonna be this comparative analysis, and if you got teams that are getting beaten by programs from the FCS and others on your resume, it just doesn't doesn't hold water out in Grapevine, Texas. Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. When, when If you're Clemson, you're looking at NC State and thinking, man, we need you to go beat Mississippi State because if they did that, they'd have probably gone in that Clemson game as a top 25 team, and you can put that as a notch on your belt. Now you look at the rest of the year, and I mean, who's going to be top 25? Pitt, I think, could be. Uh, yeah. And then at the end of the year, Wake Forest is the other one that you look at, and you're like, okay, probably. Boston College, I think that went out of the window with Phil Jerkovic going out, and and I don't mm. see that team being ranked with that schedule uh, before Clemson. Plus, they play Missouri, and I think they probably get beat by Missouri. So, so you look at the rest of the schedule, and there's there's not a lot of top twenty five teams out there. The NC State one kills you because I, there, it was early enough in the year where I thought NC State could get some momentum and be top twenty five. But but you're exactly right. So now you're hoping for your. If you're a Clemson fan, you are rooting for Pitt, you are rooting for Wake Forest, and you are rooting for maybe it's Pitt again, but but whoever else in the coastal, the entire team. <laughs> yeah. like, pick, pick your pick your favorite coastal team and root not for the them not the coastal so wheel of get. destiny again. No, oh, say it's yeah. not so. That's where we're at. That's where we're at. Like whether it's North Carolina or Miami or Pitt or or Virginia or Virginia Tech, like pick one of them and root <laughs> like hell for them. So that they end up top 25 in the ACC championship game. Oh, man. Roddy Joe's not giving the Tiger fans uh, a lot of hope for uh, any schedule improvements over the next 10 weeks. He's on Twitter at Roddy Jones 20. Go follow him. He does a tremendous job, not only for the ACC network, but also for the folks over at Sirius XM. And Roddy, you know, nationally, I do have to ask you because I talked about this yesterday, uh, the situation out at Southern Cal. And, and look, you you may have talked about this already. You may know this, but you know Tony Elliott's a guy from the state of California. He grew up in South Carolina after his mother tragically passed away in a car accident uh, out there, and the ESPN has well documented that in the past. And I, I really, from being a guy that played basketball with Tony and you know uh, hung out with him some while he was at Clemson, I, I think he's an East Coast guy. I don't think the West Coast will be the place. But let me just ask you: How in the world do you go into a season? I know it's Southern Cal. 
how do you go into a season? And it was a bad loss. I watched that game. It was a bad, bad loss. But how do you fire a guy just after two games? I mean, so, some of this stuff that just happens to these coaches, and I know they're high, they, they get paid a lot of money. Some of it's just crazy, though, right? I mean, it's just crazy. Yeah, that, 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 that's a tough one, man. Like, coming into the year, are you thinking, hey, look, you got one strike and you're out, one bad loss and you're out of this? That's a terrible <laughs> right. place to be if you're a coach. Um, but, but Southern Cal, I mean, in that situation, it's been sort of on a razor's edge for a long time. I think, um, the, the administration out there, Mike Wallen, the offensive, excuse me, the, uh, the athletic director finally got to the point and he's fairly new. I think he's in his third, second or third year, um, that he finally got to a situation where that, that situation was going to be untenable. Uh, and, and look, Southern Cal, I don't know if, if you saw the article in the, in the athletic, it's one of those jobs, you know, like it's one of those jobs in college football that basically every coach at one point or another has fantasized about. Mm. Uh, so I don't know if Tony Elliott goes there. To be honest, if I'm Southern Cal, I would like someone other than Tony Elliott. I want someone with West Coast experience. I want someone with coaching, with head coaching experience, because that's a big job. And not saying that Tony Elliott's not qualified for a head coaching role. But that's one of those jobs that you're going to take some heat if you do not have immediate success, especially if you go with a coordinator without head coaching experience prior and a guy that's coming basically from the opposite side of the country. Now, he has played a, he has played a part in getting a lot of California dudes to Clemson, so maybe that helps you. Like He, he obviously uh, has in contact with high school coaches out there, I'm sure. <laughs> right. But, right. But in terms of what Southern Cal is looking for, um, I, I think there's too many head coaches that are really good that that are that are out there right now that would take that job to go to Tony Elliott. Though I think Tony Elliott's going to be great wherever he goes. I'm with you 100. percent I mean that's a that's a that's a huge huge job. No matter where they've been or what they've done, but you know even last season they lose just that one final game against Oregon and 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 that's it. And then boom, he's gone. I I couldn't believe it. Like why are we just starting the season with this guy? Was kind of my right. thoughts initially. <laughs> Roddy Jones joins us here on Wednesday afternoons at 4 o'clock. Occasionally, he's got other commitments, but he's going to be here with us as much as possible during the college football season. So make sure you lock it in on the iHeartRadio app as well, watching live on Facebook, on YouTube, and uh, we are live over on Twitter. And He's on Twitter at Roddy Jones 20 All right, Roddy, last season, I mean, this Clemson-Georgia Tech game got sideways on Coach Collins and those guys to a degree that – I don't think either of you, either one of us would have ever predicted 73 to seven, the final score. Nobody's calling for that, but still, I mean, you know, being basically a 30 point uh, road underdog to Clemson is, is hard for me to imagine given how good this rivalry once was, especially when I was in school where every year it was a tight battle, you know, three points separating these teams. I mean, what has to go right for Georgia tech on Saturday for them to keep this game, you know, close and respectable heading into the fourth quarter in your opinion? Oh, man. Uh, let's see. Um, B Brian Brzee needs to forget his cleats uh, in, <laughs> in, in, in Greenville and, and then walk to Greenville to get him right when game time starts. Like, he has to start walking uh, as soon as the game starts. Miles My Murphy, um, <laughs> he, he, needs to, he needs to get on the wrong bus. <laughs> man. I'm, I'm, that I'm, I'm, that I'm, bad, I'm, huh? It's going to be that tough, maybe. I, I am I'm somewhat, somewhat joking. Uh, but for Georgia Tech, Georgia Tech needs to make it a game in the first half. Like yeah. I, I don't expect it to be a game going in the fourth quarter. This was a seventy-three to seven game a year ago. <laughs> so I like, still for can't me believe to come that. out and say like, "Hey, man, like I, I think I think they're going to play well enough to have it in a, to, to be in striking distance going into the fourth. I, I would be surprised. Clemson would need to turn the ball over a number of times, and Georgia Tech would have to get some of those momentum changing plays, a blocked punt, a blocked field goal maybe a, a, a defensive touchdown, a special teams touchdown. Like, they're going to have to get some help from Clemson because up front, Georgia Tech's not going to be able to, to, to push Clemson around, push the Clemson's defensive line around enough to sustain drives, which means you need big plays. And I don't think Georgia Tech's fast enough. Or, or maybe let me go to the other side. Clemson is too fast on defense to allow that many big plays. Like, it's just maybe you get one or two of them, mm -hmm. but but in the secondary, like, those dudes can all run, even with Landon Zanders out. Like, Joseph Charleston can run. So I, I think uh, I think Georgia Tech's going to need some help. Uh, the thing that Tech needs to be able to do is they need to be able to get Jameer Gibbs the ball and Jordan Mason the ball as much 
as possible. And it's going to be easier for Gibbs because you can move him around and try and find some situations that are advantageous. And it is the literally the only matchup where I think Georgia Tech can find some things that are advantageous because if you get Jameer Gibbs on a safety or a linebacker, it's a tough assignment. Uh, uh, and, and I say that because Jameer Gibbs is incredibly explosive. And I think a lot of the linebackers that Clemson has, but Jameer Gibbs is as quick as any running back in the country. So it's going to be tough for them to deal with him if they can get him singled up in coverage. And then on a safety, he's so big. Uh, he doesn't always run the, to, to the size that he is because he's so quick, but he's so big that it's hard for safeties to tackle him. So that's the matchup that I would look at and say, all right, if there's anything that Georgia Tech can do to yeah. try and make this thing a game for an extended period of time, it's going to go through some sort of non-offensive touchdown and number one, Jameer Gibbs on offense. Final thing for you, Roddy. Um, Clemson's offense, even this past week against SC State, you know, it just it, it it has felt like it's not I, this this episode's called the sewing machine edition. You know, a sewing machine just seems to just run perfectly. Everything's smooth, no problems. Clemson's offense, even still, just hasn't felt uh hasn't felt great. And you you've probably seen it when you've watched them. I mean, what can Clemson do specifically? Maybe it's DJ, whatever, the running game. I, I don't know. Is there anything they can do to to get this thing right in your opinion, based on what you've seen? Um, so, so I watched the South Carolina state game until our game started, uh, or really until we started having to do stuff and I haven't broken that one down, yeah. but I think this, this offense needs to find an identity and Clemson has always done an excellent job of building their identity around their playmakers. And usually that's been a running back and a receiver. And so I think that you, you, as, as much as they like their depth at running back, I think that rotation needs to be shortened. I think it's Shipley and it's Kobe Pace and then somebody else is a change of pace, no pun intended. Right. <laughs> uh, so that you can find so that you can find some rhythm and really get those guys some rhythm. Will Shipley needs to play football. He needs to be on the football field in meaningful time to go out there and make plays so that he can get the rhythm of college football and the game slows down for him. And I don't remember how many snaps he got against Georgia. And that's a tough place to put a freshman. But now you're in the stretch where, all right, you got South Carolina State as, as you know, as, as glowingly as I've talked about Georgia Tech. That is an ACC opponent. So that True. it is going to ratchet up in terms of speed. So get Will Shipley in the game and let him have a couple series in a row where he can go out there and play with brief spells. Make it clear that, like, he's the guy and he's getting spelled. Same thing with Kobe Pace. Like get him two or three series in a row where Shipley spells him. Shorten that rotation of those two. And I would say the same thing at receiver. Like Justin Ross has to be good for Clemson to achieve its goals this year. So find a way to get Justin Ross back in the college football shape, back in the college football, uh, uh, back being used to playing on, a, on every single Saturday. I, I think, you know, a Joe, a Joe, I think the world of him. Like put him out there and let him go make plays. Um, and Gata had a great game against Georgia. I don't remember what he did against South Carolina State. Yeah, he, had, he had the most receptions, yeah. He had the most receptions. Yeah, if that's yeah. Your, he has been the most consistent, yeah. So, so if that's your receiver rotation, get him out there and let him play. Shorten some of those rotations, get some rhythm on offense, and, and let DJ stop trying to have to adjust to everybody who's rotating around him. Figure out who those guys are. Go play football. Get those guys spells when they need it. That's what that's what my recommendation would be for Clemson because it's not one of those years where you've got the established goods. Like you've got to establish those things in this season before you start to to extend that rotation further. Roddy Jones, ladies and gentlemen, we hit a quick break. Thanks, Roddy. Now, Columbia's most dependable traffic, sponsored by Pope Davis Tire and Automotive, home of the best tire prices in.